These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation, and Noah walked with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. God saw the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Imagine getting a message from God audibly. He says, I'm going to destroy the world. That's what Noah got here. And if we look and we read through this passage, we realize that as Noah experienced... Really, troubled times can be a global phenomenon, can it? Not only a global phenomenon, but a global phenomenon that brings God's judgment. Here's Noah, one man out of a world, and God says, God's evaluation is, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, Every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. God saw the world has gone crazy. Not just one or two people. Everybody. With the exception of Noah. The wickedness of man was great. Everybody. If they could get away with it, they would. That doesn't sound at all like our day, does it? Just as no experience, troubled times can be a global phenomenon that brings God's judgment. What God tell Noah? I'm going to destroy the earth. This is after only ten generations. How long does it take? you go, and I did, to double check myself and count from Adam to Noah ten. Ten generations and now the evil and wickedness of man had grown complete. The earth was full of violence because of man. We could say it this way when we were ta- as we were talking in James about maturity. The evil of man, the wickedness of man had matured. It grew up fast. Granted, they live a little, lived a little longer back then. I mean, Noah's uh, grandpappy was Methuselah. He lived for a little while. But still, ten generations. Evil comes quickly and fully. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intention of thoughts and of his heart was only evil continually. And it was so bad, imagine this, God regretted it and it grieved his heart. This is the God who is so patient and kind and merciful and gracious. So patient and merciful that Uh, Even some of the writers of Scripture say, God is not uh, slow like we count slowness. You and I are finite, and maybe uh, in good cause and good doctors, we get 80 years, 90 years. Some of us, like me, are going to die a lot sooner than that. And so that time goes quickly, but for God it goes... Much, at a much different pace. So God is patient with the earth. They've gotten so bad that it grieved God in his heart. Only ten generations. In response to this wickedness, God said, I will blot out man. It's kind of like you're in the kitchen. Maybe you're doing what I was trying to do the other day and open a new bottle of apple juice 
you know they make it out of plastic now, right? And it's kind of squishy plastic. And so when you hold it to twist open, and then the apple juice shoots out on the counter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it didn't get me, but it got the counter. And then you have to take the paper towel or the dish rag or the whatever it is you use and blot up the apple juice, right? Soak it up, pull it away, get rid of it. The evil on earth was so bad, God said, I'm just going to wipe it away. And get rid of man because of their evil. Their sin, their wickedness. And did you notice, just as an aside, when he notes here in verse 7 he's going to get rid of man, there's some, some collateral damage we could say, isn't there? The birds, the animals, the creeping things, they're all going to suffer under God's wrath because of the sin of man. That's why later in Scripture it records for us that the earth groans under our sin. It feels the effects of our sin ever since the garden. It's gotten so bad just in ten generations. Basically, God can say, the wickedness of man is now complete. I'm going to wipe it away. The whole world. Evil can be on a global scale. But also the wickedness of man or of men was so great and pervasive it grieved God and brought about universal judgment. God who is so loving and kind and yet it grieved him so deeply. Sin still does grieve God but now the payment's been made through Jesus Christ. You really stop and consider all that goes on with the crucifixion of Jesus, his separation from the Father, the emotional, spiritual turmoil as described in the Psalms as Jesus is hanging there on the tree, the physical suffering, not only as rendered in the Gospels, but as pictured by all the animal sacrifices blood and death sin grieves God we've been studying Psalm 106 on Tuesday nights a psalm of national repentance the psalmist there like as we've noted Daniel prays and confesses not only his personal but national guilt wickedness in our country is not relegated to those who are committing it we share in the guilt and this time Noah's day it was the same it was so great so pervasive it grieved God and brought about universal judgment in fact verse 11 says now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and the earth was filled with violence and God saw the earth and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Isaiah says it this way, All we like sheep have gone astray. It turned everyone to his own way. So that our sins would be laid on him. In fact, God tells Noah, his plan says, to know I have determined to make an end to, of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence. Behold, I will destroy them and the earth. There's a universal judgment, but the wickedness of men was evidenced by universal violence. You want to see how bad it is? The whole earth. No, I've decided to destroy the entire earth because it's full of violence. How do we know people are wicked today? Cut someone off down in Salt Lake and see what happens.
go and watch the news about what's happening in some of our cities before and after. What's happening in countries across our world, even uh, to believers. Just as in Noah's day, the evidence that there's wickedness all around us is the violence. The universal violence. Now that we're all depressed, Noah lives just like we did. Just like we do. His day is much like ours. Noah experienced this global phenomenon of wickedness. But just as Noah, we are called, like Noah, to live righteously and proclaim righteousness amidst these troubled times. You read and you look at Noah. Noah, you could have been in 2020. All you need there in the recording of Genesis is a, a plague. Noah lived in the same as we. What was Noah called to do? I'm not saying go start a boat in your backyard. It's all we think of with Noah, but Scripture tells us a few more details. It says in verse 8, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Did he deserve it? He's a sinner like everybody else. He's a descendant of Adam ten times down. No. It says these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. That is, he had a right relationship with God. Was Noah perfect? Nope. I'm not sure I'd want to hear what Noah said when he hit his hand, a thumb with the hammer while he was building the ark. But Noah was righteous because he had a right relationship with God. The same that we can have based on faith. Noah is before the law. Noah is before uh, the entire system of animal sacrifices. Obviously at this point, if you read the account earlier with uh, Cain and Abel, God had given some instructions on correct approach to God through animal sacrifice. But in a very sin-filled, wicked world, and all the world has gone crazy. Noah was righteous and blameless before God. Why? Because Noah walked with God. That's not a physical sense. This is God. Noah had a relationship with God. And everyone else in his generation across the entire world all else of humanity feel like being alone, try to be like that, had gone their own way, were evil and wicked as evidenced by their violence, had rejected God, Noah was found righteous and blameless because he walked with God. Here's the generations of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. And God saw that the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God told Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Noah and we in troubled times, are called to live righteously and proclaim righteousness in the troubled times. Even when it looks like Noah's day. Even in troubled times, we are called to live 
righteously. Mama ever tell you, if your friends jump off a bridge, are you going to do? Just because our world is, is sinful and wicked, does that give us license? Let me parrot the Apostle Paul. May it never be. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Why? Because he was righteous, blameless. How was he righteous and blameless? He walked with God. It's not hard. It's not complicated. In a day like Noah's, when violence is all around, what are we to do? There's a little children's song, This Little Light of Mine. It goes through one of the parables of Jesus, talking about you don't go and take a candle and put it under a bushel, do you? That is a basket. If you build a city, you don't go put it under the hill unless you're a dwarf. You put it on top of the hill. Make it visible. That's what we're called to do. This little light of mine, I'll let it shine. Live righteously even in a wicked world. Even in troubled times like no, we are called to live righteously. And it goes one step further. Even in troubled times, we are called to proclaim righteousness. Not a lot of people are wanting it, going to want to hear it. In fact, the films we'll be viewing next week, one of them really drives that point home. Kind of gives you the, a feel for what it would have been like to be Noah, to be building an ark when they don't have rain, and you're telling them, God's going to send this great flood across the earth. And everybody's laughing at you and going, oh, kooky old Noah. He always has to do the right thing. And now he's got in his mind that God's going to destroy the earth. Ha, ha, ha. And yet he's there day after day through his actions of building. Even as Peter says here, Second Peter 2.5, no was a herald, a proclaimer of righteousness. What are you called to do? What am I called to do? In a dark, wicked day where evil is worldwide, proclaim righteousness. What are we called to do? We've looked at the response, how, how do we deal with these troubled times, how it affects us personally, but what are we to do now? Live righteous, proclaim righteous. Even in troubled times, like Noah, not only are we to proclaim righteousness, but we are assured of God's deliverance. How many came on the ark? I got seven fingers back there. No, eight fingers. Noah and seven others, right? Here's Peter in his letter writing to people who are under attack from false prophets. Some he likens to Baal or Baalum. In a world, a Roman world, where it's nothing to be walking down the street and in one of the temples they're having an orgy or other things, where Roman soldiers are not known for frilly unicorns and loveliness. If you're not a Roman citizen, then it's open season on you. If you have anything I want, A time of despotism. A time of Christians being sent into the arena to die. 
computer writes to the sheep that he's caring for a long distance and says, if God did not spare the ancient world, but preserve Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others, can't he preserve you? Noah is such an example for us because he lived righteously. And so God lets them in. Hey, Noah, you better build a boat. I'm going to destroy the world with water. And by the way, while you're doing it, tell everybody. They can get a free ride on the ark if they will, but believe what I say and can trust me in my ark. If God can save just eight nieces, little people, out of a world, a world that if you just drive down the road, we passed it on the way up here, Fossil Butte, they like to say there was a big lake there, but those mountains are pretty tall. If there's water above those mountains, there's water everywhere. If God can save them, preserve them, in fact, verse 9, Peter finishes the thought. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials. Let the trying of your faith have its full work to bring you to spiritual maturity. Does that sound familiar from James chapter 1 a couple weeks ago? If God and save Noah and his family. God can save you. In troubled times when there's global wickedness and tr global trouble, we are called like Noah to be heralds of righteousness, livers of righteousness. And we are also assured of God's deliverance. Noah experienced these times. The global phenomenon of evil evidenced by such great wicked violence. And if no one can do it, yeah, but he didn't have the internet. People are mean on the internet. Yeah, but he didn't have the internet to tell them to live righteously and proclaim righteousness. But Noah didn't have, really? He didn't have power tools. And if God can preserve Noah and his family, God can preserve you. We are called to the same thing as Noah, to live righteously and proclaim righteousness amidst troubled times. And the reassurance is this, God knows how to save the godly when he brings judgment. So let's ask some questions. Are you surprised by universal sweeping evil? You shouldn't be. It's happened before. It will happen again. But let's be honest. Ask yourself, are you living up to your calling to live righteously and proclaim righteousness? It's hard. People are wicked. And they like it, and they want you to agree with them. Just read Paul in Romans. Live and proclaim righteousness. And remember, as bad as it looks, as dark as it looks, as desperate as it feels, Especially considering we know the end, right? We know God wins. God delivers the righteous from his universal judgment. When the last trump is sounded, the body of Christ is raptured, 
and the great trial and travail that is to come, basically God hanging out a brilliant neon sign saying, remember me, I'm still here, repent. Where will you be? If you think this is bad now, wait. When the church of God is raptured from this world and the true last days are upon us, the tribulation, as is termed, will you be here? Or will you be in heaven? Because God knows how to deliver the righteous. One day there's going to be a trumpet and all those who are alive and dead in Christ will be raised. I sure hope you don't miss going with Christ. Because it's going to get really bad. Because God knows how to rescue the godly. All right, time to unleash literally the apocalypse. That's where we get the word from. Time to take the church out. Bring them to be with me while I unleash the apocalypse. One day it's happening, just like in Noah's day. Hey, Noah, I'm going to destroy the whole world with water. All the people stand there. <laughs> Noah, you're so funny. You should do stand-up comedy. And then they were banging on the door that God had closed. And they perished. And their bones, and the bones of all the animals, are encased for us in rock. God knows how to deliver the godly. Are you one of them? If not, you have questions. The Bible tells us we'd be happy to share that with you. How we know if we're godly. How we know how to have a right relationship with God. It's all there. And it's all been provided. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for Noah and that you preserve uh, the story of Noah, the real life account Lord, we thank you for his example, even in such hard and troubled times as he lived. Lord, you empowered him to proclaim righteousness. Through his walk with you, he was able to live righteously. Lord, let us be like Noah in our day. And Lord, we ask for any here who are facing the challenges without you that they would find out today how to be godly or not burning it we know that's impossible but receiving the gift of grace but when the trumpet is sounded and we see the last evidence of God knowing how to rescue the godly that they would be there as well we ask in Jesus name Amen